Hey guys, today we're doing another educational video. Again, I'm going to be doing a very scarce variation. This, uh, this one is not even in the books, uh, at least I've never not seen it documented in the books. It is considered a factory variation. There was only a hundred of them made. I call it the Stoughton's gun. There's actually three variations of this gun. Of the PPs, there's three blocks. There's a block of steel. This is a steel gun and uh, you can see number seven. Uh, these were numbered. We, uh, we have to assume there was about 100 of these made because we have, uh, we have actually in hand up to number 92. So it would make sense they ordered about a, a, a hundred of them. Um, but this one is number seven. You can see the marking um, on the PP. And again, this is steel framed. They then, then did a small block of Doral. There's only six known uh, Doral PPs. We're going to go over the, vari the Doral variations, but basically Doral was an aluminum frame, um, made it, the gun a little bit lighter, and then finally they came out with a uh, PPK. It seems as if the, there's the same number, probably 50 PPs and 50 PPKs, because the survival rate on these are pretty high. I'll talk about that a little bit more, but let's back up a little bit and talk about um, where these went. A lot of the uh, videos that I do, it, it looks like an episode of Pawn Stars. Uh, this one, however, is going to look more like Mythbusters. Uh, and let me tell you why. As long as I've been collecting these and first found out about the Stoughton's guns, I was told that these went to, you know, the heroes of Telemark? The heroes of Telemark. Kirk Douglas, Richard Harris, Ulla Jacobson, Michael Redgrave. Their mission stopped the Nazis from developing the atom bomb. It's about the Norwegians, uh, the water factory there, the heavy water. The Germans were trying to get atomic uh, material, uh, nuclear material to make an atomic bomb. And the Norwegians uh, stopped them from doing that. Um, and I was told these went to that factory. However, uh, quick research would tell you this is Swedish. <laughs> and therefore, uh, this gun is actually uh, went to the Swedish State Water Authority. So basically, they're, they're waterworks, Swedish waterworks. Um, it actually, I have to read it because my, my Swedish is not real good, but let me see if I can get that right. It's Staten's, Vatten's, Fallen's, Wirken, Fakken, Ficken, Schnacken. That, <laughs> that uh, to my Swedish friends, I apologize. My Swedish is terrible. But uh, this went to the Swedish waterworks. It has no connection to the heroes of Telemark. So I apologize for those people who I repeated that <laughs> falsehood. But you know how collectors, a uh, good example would be the Black Widow. Uh, Black Widow Luger is very popular. People say they went to the SS because they're black and really cool. Uh, actually has no connection to the SS. So we as collectors sometimes hear a story about a gun, especially when there's only 100 of them. Not sure where it went, but this was Swedish Waterworks. So factory guards, probably Swedish citizens. Um, the reason being, the Germans didn't want to deploy troops to watch the waterworks. Everybody, the Swedes, the Nazis, nobody wanted the water supply to be poisoned or interrupted. Uh, people would die. So they had uh, factory guards who guarded the factory. These were 100 of these, 50 PPs, and 50 PPKs were issued to the factory guards. The survival rate, I mentioned that, probably close to 50%. We, I, I know of 32 guns. That means there's probably some undiscovered guns out there. A lot of them are coming in from Sweden. Uh, Sweden uh, does export them. I, I buy them as a collector from Swedish auctions from time to time. So we can bring them to the United States where gun, gun ownership is a little easier than it is in Europe. So they're still available. They're almost always in incredible condition. The bores are usually mirror. Sweden was never bombed. It was part of the war, but there, wasn't, there weren't any Swedish battles. The, uh, the, uh, the invasion was just more of an occupation. Um, during that time, the, the Germans came in in 1940, but before that, the Swedish army only had 100,000 men in it, and they were deployed on the Finnish border because uh, Finland, if you remember, was being invaded by the Soviet Union. Now, at that time, the Swedes were more afraid of the Soviets than they were of the Germans. So they, they stacked their troops along the Finnish border, and of course the Germans came into Denmark, and they invaded Norway, and then just occupied Sweden. So they came in from the, from the western side, where there was no defenses. Uh, so generally, Sweden was just occupied, 
Uh, there weren't any major battles there, no major bombings, and therefore their survival, the survivability of these weapons was much higher than most guns. We estimate, you know, when we do uh, calculations on how many were made, we, we assume a 10% survival rate because a lot of them went to the bottom of the ocean, a lot of them were destroyed, a lot of them people buried them in their backyard and then forgot about it. So a 10% survival rate on German handguns is, is about average. Uh, whereas these, uh, we probably have a 50% survival rate. So that's a little bit about the Swedish waterworks, but don't go away because coming at you now, I have a big surprise. You're going to like this. I actually have a boxed Swedish waterworks gun. Now this is your normal box. Again, I'll do another video just about the different box variation. This is the color of a normal uh, pre-war and wartime PPK box. And, and you've seen these before. I actually showed you an RJ that was new in the box. Um, for this to be new in the box, first of all, this is a, much sturdier than this. This is just a flimsy cardboard box. Um, it has the typical green label and the number is on the side. The number matches the gun. For this to be in this condition, it had to have been issued, uh, put in a closet. You know, maybe they, they handed out nine, 90 of them and 10 of them went in a closet somewhere. This one was st uh, stuffed in a closet. Uh, it came to the United States. A collector friend of mine had this for many years and then graciously sold it to me. It's not for sale. I'm going to keep this one forever. I'll keep this as long as I can't say Vatten, Staten, Totten, Botten. If I can't get that, then I can't sell this gun. So inside we have the original cleaning rod, and this is correct. Um, a later, a later manual, the other manuals actually have, it's more of a booklet. Uh, and again, when I go over the different boxes, I'll show you the booklets. But this is in incredible condition. It's like brand new. Um, incredible manual. Actually, it has a picture of a PP on the front with a box, uh, the box magazine. That's kind of cool. Um, inside, with, as you would see in most, you see there's a spare magazine that's flat bottom. Uh, actually, the finger extension won't even fit in here. So we know it came with, with one finger extension mag and one flat bottom mag. This is typical. This is always a surprise. What's in this little tin? Uh, usually, there's a rag, an oil can and maybe a piece of cellophane. Uh, this one, there's your oil. That is original oil from 1940. Look at that, 1940 oil. This one comes in a little bottle. We also have seen them in other kinds of uh, uh, bottles. This is a horsehair rag, which they used to, I think it's horsehair. Doesn't actually look like horsehair. I don't know what that is, but it's just a, uh, a little felt kind of a thing. And here is the original cellophane that the little rag came in. So you can see the Walder, uh, crumpled up Walder logo. So from 1940, there's the tin with the whatever hair that is. It, f it actually feels like insulation. Uh, typically they were horse hair, but that feels more like insulation. If you remember other tins, they came with a factory, a uh, picture of the factory. This is a later version from 1940. They just did the banner, which is a little easier. And then finally the gun. The gun, just like these other ones, is just in incredible condition. And the number on this one is 79. So it's, it's uh, near the end of the run, again, stuck in a closet. Um, I believe there's about 100 of these, but incredible finds. I'm really proud to, to own some of these guns, and I'm really proud to bring them to you. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, make sure you stay tuned for more rare variations of Walder PPs and PPKs. If you're like me and you can't get enough of this stuff, click here to subscribe. That way we'll notify you when we do new videos or click one of these buttons for recommended videos.